Joining us now for more is the former spokesperson for the Justice Department during the early years of the Trump administration and ABC News contributor Sarah Isker. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, former President Trump returned to D.C. for the first time since leaving office. Let's take a listen to part of his speech. I'm here before you to begin to talk about what we must do to achieve that future when we win a triumphant victory in 2022 and when a Republican president takes back the White House in 2024. Whether all Republicans like this or not, would you say that former President Trump is definitively the mantle holder for the party still? I would. You know, we've seen some softening of support for Donald Trump, but by softening, we mean still around 50 percent of Republican primary voters say they're interested in Donald Trump running in 2024. The closest runner-up, Ron DeSantis, at about 25 percent, still way ahead of the rest of the field, Mike Pence and others in single digits. So no question Donald Trump is still the the most famous Republican, obviously, and the Republican that Republican primary voters probably trust the most at this point. His former VP, Mike Pence, gave a dueling speech today at a different conference. Let's take a listen to part of what he had to say. I don't know that our movement is that divided. I don't know that the president and I differ on issues. But we may differ on focus. I truly do believe that elections are about the future. And, Sarah, we asked the question last night to Mark Short. Do you think if Trump runs a possible divided field, including Vice President Pence, will play right into his hands again? Well, I just have flashbacks to 2016. You know, I was on Carly Fiorina's campaign. We had 17 candidates running for president in that race. And it doesn't take very many then for the front runner to win that nomination. Donald Trump won the Republican nomination with a very small plurality of Republican voters. If Republican candidates do that again in 2024, absolutely Donald Trump, I think, will be the nominee. The opportunity for someone like Vice President Pence, who's well-respected, well-regarded within the party, even if voters don't necessarily want him to be the nominee for president, is to get all those Republicans in a room and say, if you are serious about Donald Trump not being the future of the Republican Party, we all need to get behind a single candidate. And we've heard Pence say that he doesn't think that the movement is all that divided. Do you agree with that, especially what we've been hearing, you know, uh, over the course of these months from the, the, the January 6 hearings and what the committee has brought forth, especially watching just how close, I mean, Mark Short told us last night that he felt that if the crowd had gotten closer to Pence that day, there would have been a massacre in the Capitol. This is the political tightrope that Mike Pence has been trying to walk now since they left office, trying to embrace his years as Donald Trump's vice president while trying to draw that separation and distinction for his own political future. Would a potential Trump 2024 campaign announcement complicate the decision that Merrick Garland and the DOJ are facing as far as whether or not to pursue criminal charges against the former president who could soon become candidate Trump? Well, at the Department of Justice, you know, these aren't uh, in stone guidelines, but generally speaking, after September, the department usually waits to get involved in any sort of uh, candidate related indictment or investigation to take more investigatory steps. What we've seen so far from the department is not that they're focused on the former president, particularly on that idea of incitement that the former president caused the violence on January 6th. We've seen no real steps from the department on that. What we've seen are 15 people in and around the president uh, with certain search warrants, subpoenas, around that fake elector idea. Plenty of federal statutes around fraud involving those electors. But we haven't seen them take any steps toward the president, so I'm not sure it's all that important to them one way or the other when he announces. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. As the Justice Department, though, continues that sweeping investigation into January 6th, how significant is reporting that was broken by ABC News that Mark Short had testified under oath to the grand jury investigating the attack? Well, I mean, one of the strongest points for both the January 6th committee and the Department of Justice is how many people in and around Donald Trump's closest circle have provided testimony about what Donald Trump was doing that day and, again, what some of those other people around him were doing that day. I do think that when it comes to criminal charges, of course, the January 6th committee far more focused on the political, moral implications of what Donald Trump did as president. But it'll be up to the Department of Justice to decide whether any laws were broken. All right, Sarah Isker, our thanks to you once again for joining the show.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.